Hey guys, Dwayne England here with FHN in the Bait Lab, and today we're talking about prepping and brining and smoking fish. And today we're actually doing uh, some coho salmon or some silver salmon. Now this fish was caught this past fall. It was vacuum packed and in the freezer. Took it out last night and now I'm going to get it ready for smoking. And I like to use a dry rub. Keep in mind there are a number of recipes out there that you can utilize when it comes to smoking fish. Whether you're a wet or liquid brine type of person or a dry brine. I've gone to a dry rub just because I like the results I get. Again, there's a lot of different recipes and I'm sure as we go through the course of the year, Chef Kelly's gonna come out with a number of recipes that you can use. This is one that I've used for a number of years and I stick with it because it's kind of one of those things once you've, in your mind, perfected your smoking process, you don't like to deviate from it a whole lot unless you're experimenting. So. If you have the opportunity to go out and harvest some fish and some salmon or steelhead and you want to smoke it and you finally fine tune that process or recipe that you have, stick with it and uh, you'll be happy with your results. So for me, it's, uh, it's a, lot of the, the lo a lot of the end result you get when you're smoking your fish happens because of the uh, initial prep work. So when it comes to prepping these, uh, these were cut into you know, reasonable size pieces uh, back in the fall and vacuum packed for say a meal. But now we're gonna actually process them just a little bit more to get them ready for smoking. One thing I've already done is I've mixed up my dry brine. This is a combination of brown sugar, uh, coarse ground pepper, garlic salt, dried onion, and the ratio for me is a five to one. So I'll go five cups of brown sugar, one cup of non-iodized sea salt, and then I put in a half cup, a third to a half cup of garlic salt or garlic powder, typically garlic salt, uh, a half cup of dried onion, and a half cup of coarse uh, ground pepper. And that's the ratio I like to use for my dry rub or my dry brine. Basically, make sure you mix it thoroughly in the bowl and uh, I get that ready to go early on so that those seasonings can kind of blend together, meld together and uh, makes a really good base for a dry brine. So now that the dry brine is ready to go, uh, we have a few steps we want to do with our fillets. And one thing I like to do is take the extra time to remove the pin bones. Okay, the pin bones are the ones that run along the top of the back ridge after you fillet a salmon and have removed uh, the, the, the big fillet off of the backbone, you're still gonna have these pin bones that run high on the back. And you can leave them in, uh, that's your choice. But for me, when you're eating smoked fish or any type of fish, the palatability of it is something that kind of accentuates the flavor and the experience. And for if you're serving your smoked fish to friends and family who have not had smoked fish before, if they don't have to sit there and pick pin, uh, little bones out of their teeth, the overall experience is much more rewarding. So take the little extra time and it's really simple. Get yourself a pair of tweezers or I even use these real nice uh, easily gripped uh, uh, needle nose and make sure that the point closes really tight because if you have a gap in there you're not going to be able to grab these little pin bones. So make sure the tips come together and all you're going to do is rub your hand along this back ridge and it actually uh, exposes those pin bones. You can see how easily they pop up and once they're exposed you simply grab them and pull the opposite direction of how they go into the meat. So I know these lay in this way I'm gonna extract them out this way and it's just that simple. You can just go down the ridge line here and pull each one of them bones and trust me on this this is going to make uh, your end product so much better for the consumer uh, and yourself when, when this process is done. So real quickly, we'll just remove these bones out of this one filet. And you can see how easy these come out of here. Now, one thing I can tell you is fish that has been in the freezer and thawed out, and I don't know if it has to do with the moisture in the meat at the time, but if you take a fresh salmon or steelhead, fillet it out and try to pull the pin bones, it's a lot more difficult in that the bones are attached to the meat uh, substantially. They hold in stronger, I guess. And as you pull those bones out, you tend to drag a little more flesh or meat out with you. So if you plan to smoke fish, fresh is good, but there's nothing wrong with freezing your fish 
uh, and then thawing to make sure you can get these pin bones out at some point uh, later. So that's pretty much all of them. You just you just walk down that that ridge line. Now I can rub my hand run my hand over that, and there are no pin bones left in that fillet. So now I got a real nice size fillet here, and uh, we're going to section it out to where I like to. Uh, make it to where it, it smokes a little more evenly and by that I mean if you look at that fillet and the size difference I can look down the middle of it and I have a I have the belly side which is a lot thinner I have the back side of the uh, the upper back side of the fish which is much thicker like this piece here if I was to smoke uh, that in strips it's fine but I like to cut it in half and one thing I want to point out is look at the amount of fat back fat on this coho so all that fat and all that all those oils in this fish make it just prime time when it comes to smoking these oils will come out of this meat and uh, that just that just adds so much flavor to this fish when it's smoked uh, fatty fish is some of the best fish that you can smoke when you can find certain types of it like summer on steelhead phenomenal for smoking because of high fat content springer because of high fat content some of our uh, some of our chinook salmon the spring Chinook salmon that returned clear up over in the upper uh, stretches of Idaho on the Columbia River. Phenomenal for smoking because of high fat content. So I like to cut these into manageable sized pieces um, for smoking because if, if I cut this into a strip, let's do it this way here. If I cut this into a strip this way, I have uh, variance in thickness, okay? I can look at that and say, the, uh, the thicker side here is probably going to take a little longer to smoke than this thinner side. So oftentimes I separate it down the middle. And I will do that before I even cut it into strips. So I, I figure out where that center line is that I want to separate that. And I will simply cut it this way. And now I'll take these thinner strips and just like this. And you know a sharp knife is key when doing this so that you don't uh, drag through the meat and tear it up. You want to be able to go through that skin which is relatively tough. You want to be able to go through that skin uh, really easy. So we're just going to cut those into strips all equal size. Now when these are on the smoking rack the thickness difference in those these thinner pieces will smoke up and be done sooner than the thicker part. So I like to, and I'll show you this uh, later as we load the rack for smoking, when I load my smoking racks I tend to put similar size pieces on each rack. So the thicker ones will all go on a couple racks and the thinner pieces will go on one or two racks. And when those thinner pieces are done sooner than the thicker, I can pull those out so I don't over smoke them or over dry them. Okay, that's the reason I do this. That's, a, that's the whole reason I separate those out. So we'll just toss those over here. And again, I've already separated these out. We talked about the fat content. We're just going to cut these into manageable size pieces for smoking. They're a lot easier to brine when they're in shorter pieces too, I think. So that's all we do right there. And pretty much done. Again, this one really shows you the difference in thickness. And so I'm going to take that, cut it down the middle. I'll take these short pieces. Cut those in and these center pieces like this. Make a few longer strips. And now these are all ready for smoking. And I have a, uh, a pretty ample amount of fish here I'm going to be smoking today. I got a good sized smoker. We'll talk over smoker basics a little later, uh, different options that you have. The other thing to consider too, if you have not ever uh, smoke the bellies out of fish. These are the belly sections that came out of these coho that we caught and there are so much fat in this meat uh, right here that uh, this is some of the oiliest meat that comes off of these fish and we'll talk about smoking these belly sections later but I will brine these up and smoke them along with all this flesh and these belly sections are pretty amazing when it comes to uh, finished product. So uh, with that we're going to go ahead and uh, Wipe these down a little bit and get them ready to go in the brine and we'll talk about brining our fish next.